Um, as, as we just heard, uh, herring is, is very essential for the Baltic Sea food web. Uh, has a structuring role and um, is important for a number of fish species um, and uh, birds and marine mammals. Um, the fisheries, um, we have taken part in, in historical notes and, and uh, we can confidently say that uh, herring has been a staple food for Stockholm and, and the Swedish East Coast for, for at least uh, a millennium since early medieval time uh, or even even more back in time uh, it has been a, a very important fish species to fish and, and um, cod as well of course but uh, cod has disappeared from time to time um, but herring seems to be continuously fished um, uh, for several hundred years. Uh, th this is about to change and, and um, maybe um, industrial uh, herring fishing is a likely candidate for, for the decline. Um, has also come closer to the coast, especially in areas well known to be important for herring fishing, uh, as in as in uh, the Hanebyk uh, in the southern uh, Baltic Sea uh, along um, the um, Sörmland coast and uh, and also in, in the Bothnian Sea. And, uh, and um, this can be described as uh, with a crude um, model on, on, um, on the central Baltic herring. It has declined with at least 80% over the last 45 years and um, is coming close to the, to some uh, precautionary limits um, uh, and the reproduction might be impaired. Um, so it's vital to understand uh, how um, this fish is separated uh, into different population, if it is, and, and uh, also why it should be, why it is, why the possible cause of this uh, separation. And um, the importance of um, <coughs> different um, substocks can be illustrated with this simple model. Um, we have um, overarching um, impression of, of a stock um, with an upper curve and when it fished up to, to about 50% of the virgin biomass, uh, the growth is supposed to be um, at the maximum. And uh, if the fishery continues from, from uh, right to left, uh, the growth um, that can be explored uh, declines and uh, eventually the fish managers maybe want to, to, to act uh, and uh, restore uh, the population and um, that might turn out to be uh, difficult because uh, the stock actually consisted of several uh, substocks and, and um, if they are, have been extirpated, uh, uh, they, <coughs> they are not easily recovered, so to speak. So, so the recovery potential could be quite low uh, and this, is, this process we can, um, uh, ha has happened in, on, on the Swedish West Coast concerning cod uh, and um, hearing um, has been shown to, to consist of different uh, distinct populations so it, it might also occur on this on the east coast and um, here is di three different models of how population might be structured with no differentiation. Maybe eel is a good candidate for that and uh, continuous change, maybe perch, 
has that kind of um, uh, structure uh, and distinct populations and, and by um, recent studies, for instance by Leif Andersson, um, we are now um, confident that uh, the herring uh, stock consists of different populations, um, distinct populations, uh, but the number is still unknown, so it's, uh, it's an ongoing uh, research on uh, how many genetic uh, differentiated populations that uh, exist. But um, why are they structured and how? Um, there are three major uh, hypotheses. Uh, biophysical forcing, uh, sea currents, hydrographical structures uh, might keep populations separated. Uh, and um, this is a model that has been very popular. Um, and fish are seen as, as more or less randomly adhere to, to different spawning sites and, and could also vary between uh, different spawning occasions. Um, Especially for, for uh, herring, um, social entrainment um, has been suggested, but um, uh, herring has no um, homing uh, tendency for a specific uh, site, but they are learning uh, by, uh, uh, by social entrainment and f as um, Young fish, they uh, eventually adhere to, to shoals of fish, and uh, after that, they show uh, spawning fertility to specific uh, spawning sites, and, and this can be shown by tagging, for instance. Uh, and the third uh, hypothesis is uh, natal homing, uh, or philopatric behavior, um, which is common and commonly known in salmon and eel. I would say that cod also show, um, it has been shown that uh, uh, cod is uh, uh, showing uh, natal homing um, and return to their uh, parental spawning grounds. Um, how, how distinct this mechanism would be is, is, is has to be studied. Herring population structure in, in a small area such as uh, the Stockholm archipelago. Um, we started to study that uh, last spring. Um, and um, uh, here are some uh, uh, spawning sites. It's well known that herring spawn within the Stockholm archipelago. And um, uh, we studied it. We study the, the population structure by analyzing trace elements in the otolith core. The otolith is the ear stone in fish. And um, it has been collected at five sites, and um, the otoliths have been prepared at deep, and, and uh, the chemistry an analysis is conducted uh, at Lund University We're using. Uh, uh, a specific um, method for chemical analysis. Um, we also have studied um, the spatial structure uh, close to the offshore. Uh, this spring uh, we used a tucker troll and, and acoustics, acoustics uh, <coughs> in um, the southeastern part of um, the Stockholm archipelago. And according to the historical notes, fishing mostly occurred outside the archipelago. Uh, it's often said that the herring enters uh, the archipelago to spawn, but um, that is unlikely, actually. Um, it's according to the historical notes, fishing occurred outside the outer scaries. Um, yeah, so we have uh, different 
trawl holes. It was a small study, but uh, anyway, it confirmed that we found um, herring. The figures are the number of herring larvae per uh, thousand cubic meters trawled water. And um, herring mostly spawn on, on um, local banks of 15 to 20 meters depth. And um, the, egg are, the eggs are um, demersal and, and hatch. Uh, and after that, uh, the larvae enters the water. So, so uh, small sized, early aged uh, larvae is an indication of um, uh, a spawning ground. And um, the otolith, here is an um, otolith, uh, and it is um, especially the core of the otolith is interesting because it represents the first part of life. So it's, it's an inert uh, material. It's never uh, restructured, uh, and it grows uh, continuously through life. And uh, it reflects uh, the water chemistry. The trace elements show the water chemistry and temperature. And fish metabolism will also uh, affect um, the size and the growth of, of otoliths. So it's a very good recorder of a kind of black box of fish. And uh, here is we, we cut through the otolith and uh, close to, to, to the um, core. Um, here is the hatching ring. The otolith, otoliths are formed already before hatching. So, um, and uh, especially since herring is, is demersal and uh, has, has demersal eggs, um, the water chemistry from a single cohort will be similar. So here we, <coughs> we analyzed it at, at, uh, at Lund. The, the, the results are not finished, unfortunately. Uh, some technical problems. Um, but I, I hopefully this autumn. Um, Here's another way of looking at the otoliths, uh, the size of the otolith uh, in, in relation to, to fish length uh, or fish size. So it reflects different metabolism uh, experiences uh, and um, different temperature could give rise to differences in, in uh, otolith growth, for instance. So they are, the, the fish are three years old here and uh, of similar size. Uh, but they have a different uh, ratio between otolith weight and fish length uh, between. They uh, differ systematically to some extent between different uh, spawning locations within the Stockholm archipelago. So that's an indication actually that they are different uh, and uh, they um, do not mix randomly uh, during the juvenile phase. Yeah, all right. Um, so the summary, um, we are studying the structure of herring stock in the Stockholm Archipelago, uh, both by uh, otolith chemistry, and we will also compare our results with, uh, with the genetic methods. Uh, that is con uh, the uh, genetic analysis is conducted at uh, the zoological uh, department uh, by Linda Leikne. And um, there are signs that they are actually um, uh, separated or, or, or at such close, at such uh, small ranges. Uh, and um, further analytical results will uh, sh shed some light on, on how herring uh, populations are structured. Thank you.